This is a beautiful day in Colorado. <laughs> and I'm out on the patio. And let me tell you, I kind of live in the wilds because deer, I sometimes there are deer out here. And I hate to tell you this, but also a bear. <laughs> you know, so that's rather frightening. But it's beautiful today. And of course, I love Colorado. I live in it. And I want to really encourage you today about your memory. I want to talk to you about the mind of Christ and how God has ways to quicken our memory. Quicken means to bring life to it. So I think this will be a special day to you. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And I think you will want to help others because not only can your memory be quickened by what you hear today, but you can share this with others. I like to share, don't you? And probably I like it so much because of being a pastor's wife, but you know, I look for opportunities. So I want you to look for opportunities to share what you receive today. Now in John 14, 26, it says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remember, your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. So, you know, you can go on and say, well, my memory's bad, but you could also say John 14, 26. It's, it's good. And I looked at this. What is quicken here? It means to make alive, revive, recover, or, or restore. I'm going to tell you that again because I think you need to really get it. It means to make alive, revive, recover, or restore. So he wants to help you with your memory. This is a promise of God in, in the Bible. Now, thinking. What to think on? And he tells us what to think on. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, all of us have had bad things in our past. And so we can major on those things. We can think about them. But... The, the Bible tells us we need to think on other things. So I like in the morning to have a list of things that I can speak and think on. And then as I see answers to prayer, I like to think on these things during the day. I think it's important what you think on. And Philippians, of course, really helps us. Philippians 4, 8. But also... I love this in Old Testament. Did you know your memory is blessed? <laughs> Sometimes I think, well, it's not so blessed. But Proverbs 10, 7 says, The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. <laughs> wow. Well, we're not the wicked because we've been cleansed with the blood of Jesus if you're born again. So God promises to bless your memory. Now, if you never claim it, you probably will never have it. But if you start claiming this special scripture in Proverbs 10, 7, I think it's very important. In fact, I think it's so important we ought to pray over it right now. Are you okay with that? Are you cool? Because I like to use this time to the biggest benefit it can be to you. So, Father, I just pray for everyone watching and listening to this that you will bless their memory because we're born again and we can have a blessed memory. We're not the wicked, but we are the blessed. So what does blessed mean? It means fruitful and productive. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. You can have a fruitful memory. You can have a productive memory. And that is so cool. I love that. That's the promise. Fruitful and productive. Now, even better. Are you with me? <laughs> it says, 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Are you born again? It says you can have the mind of Christ. Do you claim that every day? I, I want to provoke you. I really do. I want you to claim the mind of Christ every day. And all of this Christians, well, I'm depressed. I had some bad news. You don't have to stay depressed. You have the Word of God. You can read. And you can speak. And you can say these promises. And the mind which was in you, that was in Christ Jesus, is that awesome? So there are times, especially if I'm ministering to unsaved people or relatives, I say, Lord, Lord, let this mind be in me which was in Christ Jesus. I mean, make the word work in your life. That is really, really key. So when I speak this to you on Facebook, I want it to work in your life. I'm not just entertaining you. No, I like to entertain, but I like to provoke. I'm provoking you to have the mind of Christ. Now, interesting, they say the more wrinkles in your brain, the more thinking you have done. So I thought, oh dear, I trust there are a lot of wrinkles in my brain because I've memorized a lot of books of the Bible. So I think, God, do you see all these wrinkles? I want you to bring to my mind what I put in there. And, you know, I think, folks, sometimes you put nothing in, you get nothing out. Come on. And I, I think putting the Word of God and memorizing Scripture is very, very key. And you say, well, what shall I memorize? Well, start with the 23rd Psalm. It's so beautiful and works in your life. And the Psalms, oh my goodness, some of them, oh, they are just gorgeous. But you could also memorize some of Proverbs, because Proverbs is wisdom. And the first 10 chapters, I think Solomon's parents made him memorize. So you say, well, you don't know that for sure. I think it though, and I think it's good for you. Take some of Proverbs and memorize it. Now. For me, I'm going to tell you my timing. My mind is best in the morning. So I like, when I get up, to put the word first. So I fix coffee. I think I've told you this before. I fix coffee, and i that's when I do my memorizing. That's when I like to do my reading of the Word of God and what God wants to say to me. Because I don't want to just read the Word. I want the Word to read me. And I don't want you just to read the Word. I want the Word to read you. And this is very, very important. And what are you going to remember? The last television show you watched, and some of those are so negative. What about the news? The news can be so negative. And I'm not against watching the news. I think we can change the news when we pray the Word. But I'm just saying, people, you've got to put the Word in if you want the Word to work. This is very important, very important. Matthew 13, 52. Are you ready? You'll love this. Then he said unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So you say, well, what do you think new and old? I think new and old testament. And so I think there are Psalms and Proverbs and Old Testament that are so refreshing and so encouraging. And why would you meditate on just junk? And you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of junk on. Why not meditate on something that refreshes you, puts fresh wrinkles in your brain? You know, and God sees that. Now, this is what I like. When you do that, he says, you know, if you meditate on the word, which I think is like memorizing, and he said, and you do it day and night, you will be productive. You will be successful in all that you do. 
So meditating, memorizing, speaking the promises that go with the problems day and night is going to make you successful in everything that you do. Now, the man who did that, he was very successful. That's Joshua. And you could look at his life and you can point to every arena of his life. He was successful meditating on the word. And so this is a practice that I have and I love it. And you say, well, it doesn't work. Well, too late to tell me that, honey. Remember, I'm 89 and it works. I know it works. You say, well, do you still remember all those books? No, but if I go back and rehearse them, it comes back to me. So I think this is very important. Plus, when my grandchildren think about me, I want them to think, oh, Mimi always was memorizing the words. She was always speaking what promises are. And those promises go with the problems and they make successes. Now, God wants you to be a success. You say, well, that's just Marilyn Hickey. No, it's you. You're born again? It's you. Does God want you to be a failure? Do you get up every morning and say, oh God, I'm sure you want me to be a failure today. You don't do that. That would be so stupid. But you can get up every morning and say what God says. And that can guide your day. And that can bring the miraculous. Why? Because you're putting faith in God's word for your day. And so I want to pray with you right now that you're just going to have such a hunger to get into the word and for the word to get into you. Father, I thank you for this opportunity. How blessed I am to get to do Facebook. And how blessed I am to pray for all of those who are watching Facebook to have a hunger for your word. And I thank you, Father, that we don't look at what we're not. We look at what your word is in us. And we don't just look at problems. We look at promises that go with problems. Father, I thank you that we can take the word and move a mountain. And what happens, Father, I know. We get what's on the other side of the mountain. Thank you, Father, for everyone watching this Facebook, getting a boost, getting a lift. Oh, God, beneficial time. This is miraculous time because we're provoked today by your word in Jesus' name. Now, you know, I have a lot of resources of getting into the Word. And so, of course, you can get on our uh, Facebook, on our line, and look, and you can get some of these resources because you know what? I want to provoke you. I want to provoke you. Well, you say, I'm too old. Who said that? Does he say, after 60, you can't meditate? After 60, you can't memorize? Come on, people. You know better than that. So I don't want any of your excuses. I want to hear from you that you're meditating on the Word, that you're under the blessing of the Word. Because remember, the blessing of the Word is greater than the curse of sin. And I love being with you today, love to hear from you, and look forward to our next session because it's going to be on the mind of Christ. You say, why? Because I want to nag you. I just want to nag you because I think this is the most important thing of your life, and it doesn't matter what your age is. It matters what he says, and he has miracles in his word, and they have your name on them. Mm -hmm.